Welcome to Heart Mindify. Before we start the show, just a reminder to share, rate, and subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening to it. And please give us a five-star rating. It helps us beat the big tech algorithms. I'm John Izzy. Change can be difficult for a lot of us, but when we understand what makes us tick, we develop a better understanding of who we are and begin a journey of discovering our best self. Join me for a free session at johnizzy.com. And I'm Kim Cordy, creator of the Emotion Chef Framework, an emotion management tool. Thoughts drive emotions and emotions drive thoughts, but it's our emotions that drive our decisions and behaviors. Find out more at kimcordy.com. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Knowing each other personally and socially for the past 10 years, Kim and John have joined forces, bringing years of experience and training providing a platform for growth and personal development, along with a little humor. John is the heart, Kim is the mind, and together they are Heart Mindified. Hello, Kim. I am under 12 inches of snow. How are you in California? We are just fine. We had some rain last night. Thank you. Uh (laughs) We needed it. I mean, I know your snow, our rain, but I heard this was the most snow that hit your area than happened for like in a whole year last year. Oh, yeah. We, I think we had maybe, I think it was like eight inches all year last year. And this year, the first snowstorm, boom, 12 inches. And then we had, I would say we got about 10 inches of snow on the ground and then about two inches of ice. And then another three inches before I went to bed last night. So that's a pretty significant storm. Yeah, and that is. was our area. I mean, I think Buffalo got 40 inches or something. It was a crazy amount. Yeah. Anyway, they can take it all away. I hate it. Buffalo always, <laughs> Buffalo always gets a lot of snow. Right? They oh, just do. Crazy. So. so I have a question for you. I hope I have an answer. What's the deal with mean people? Right. Do you, I know. Do you experience people that are brash or rude or condescending or just downright hurtful? Actually, I did today. In- Get out. Really? <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> I, your, your timing on this could not be better. I was a part of this round table and it was about marketing and I was ex- had expressed uh, some things, uh, you know, about the challenges and uh just what I'm have been facing this year. And this woman, and, and all of a sudden, I think people kind of felt badly for me. And these were a lot more experienced in this realm of business. So I know all about implementing systems and I can advise anybody on the consulting side of life. As you well know, we did it together. Yes, I did, yes. I, I, I've done it for thousands of years, but it hasn't been thousands of years of work on the emotion chef. So I, I still, you know, the whole marketing thing and social media, it can, it's, it can be a little challenging. And also this whole economic environment. Well, this woman made a comment to me, I'm not going to say it. It was just really hurtful. And I, I've kind of been a little bit sensitive anyway, just because we're on another shutdown and it's like, oh, I started crying afterwards. And I mean, like, it wasn't like just one thing that she said. There was a few things that she said. And it just kind of struck me as, as like a knife coming in at me. And now I realize like I took it to heart. And I was sensitive, so I reacted more strongly. And after I listened to her words in my head again, I realized I can't listen to what she has to say. Like it was just, it was just mean, and I shouldn't take it so strongly. But I was like, this woman doesn't know me. She doesn't know anything about me. Why was she so mean? (laughs) (laughs) So I take it you didn't respond like I would have responded by saying, 
wow, what motivates you to throw knives? <laughs> uh, no, I went into, well, it was mean. And it was really bad timing mean too. Yeah. So. Yeah. And you know, that's the thing that I always think of when people are just downright mean. It's like, what is the motivation behind the act of being mean, right? It's like, there's something going on inside of you that you feel the need to throw these brash, rude, condescending, and just harsh and hurtful comments at other people. There's like, there's something inside of you that's causing you to react the way that you're reacting. And I shouldn't have to be a reciprocate of that, you know? Yeah, I I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it. I don't need it. And I pretty much connected with everybody on that meeting in on LinkedIn, except for her. I was like, yeah, no, don't want anything to do with her. So yeah, yeah she, it, it probably does. She could be probably in the same sensitive spot as I am. And yet she probably feels better about herself, right? Because she put me down. Right. She raised herself up by putting you down. Right. And I've talked about that before. And I've talked to, I talk about it in my course, it's called a downward comparison and that we feel better about ourselves when we're mean to others. And that doesn't make sense, but it does, right? It does make sense because I believe that we are all looking for acceptance and importance and if we find that our jobs or our families or our life does not have that outward look of importance, then we'll do things and we'll behave in ways to force other people to see us as being important. And one of those ways, and an easy way to do it, is to be the class bully, right? It's to be the harsh person. Um, when you do that, you push those people down and other people around them are afraid then to stand up for them. So they just kind of follow you. And then you gain this group of people who are continually feeding your ego. So I believe that it does happen and it happens a lot. And, and I believe people that do it know that they're doing it. Because I think it's bullshit to say that you don't know. I didn't know I was being mean. I just think that's bullshit. They knew they were being mean. And that's the way that they, that's the way that they carry themselves in the world. Well, I think sometimes they do and other times they don't. They, they know the feeling that they get from being mean, but they might not actually realize it. Because not everybody is mean to someone's face, Right. No. Okay. In this right, article, right. I've used this article uh, in speeches that I've given uh, in my course. I I loved this article. It's about why people are so mean by Dr. Neil Heflick. And he wrote a very simple article in Psychology Today, but it said a lot. And he talked about this social comparison theory. And he said that um, they did this little research based on this com social comparison theory, which really argues that people make comparisons to other people naturally. That's just what we do all the time. We're comparing ourselves. Mm -hmm. They were doing some research. And in this one study, when people were told they were unattractive using fake feedback compared to being attractive, they rated others not only is less attractive, but also less intelligent and less kind. So being insulted, not only did it make them likely to demean others, but they one-upped it. So you can't just say that person's unattractive. They also have to be stupid and mean also. So you see how this snowball effect happens, right? It gets mm -hmm. bigger and bigger and bigger. And it all has to do with how we feel about ourselves. Oh, I definitely think that you're right on there. I think it is a, a um, representation of who we are internally. And, you know, I think that 
that being mean comes from a place of fear. I think it comes yeah. from a place of hurt. I think it comes from a place of weakness, right? And all that is my own fear, my own hurt, my own weakness, right? It's not about your fear or your hurt or your weakness. It's about my own reflection. It's about me as an individual. And, you know, we all have insecurities and vulnerabilities that we want to protect. When we go into fear mode, we are protecting ourselves. But in protecting ourselves, sometimes we lash out, right? We lash out at people because we're trying to protect ourselves. So I think you're right in the sense that at times people don't realize that they're actually being mean because they are comfortable with saying things a certain way that they almost believe it to be assertive or believe it to be honest feedback. When in reality, I think that's just bullshit. I think it's just being mean. And so I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I think we all have a lot of weaknesses and I think we all have fear and hurt, but there's a way to respond to people in a non hurtful way that lifts both people up instead of just yourself. I think we've gone away from that. Yes. And you can deliver news in such a way that makes it, uh, I have to say this because I'm a motion chef, palatable. You don't want words to be said to you that that are so mean that you're like, I can't, like, I, I can't even take this in because just like that woman did this morning, you don't want people to feel like they are being attacked. Put them in defense mode because then it's just not going to be productive. So if your words are seasoned with salt, and you know, salt was a currency at one time. Yeah. It was the thing to have because it made your food taste good. And that's why a man was worth his salt. So when you talk about salt back in the day, that is huge value. But today people are like, yeah, you know, Morton's just toss it on, like not a big deal. So, but when you think about the value of seasoning your words with salt, making them easier for someone to consume, it makes a huge difference. So right on, John, call that BS. Here's the difficulty though, because yeah, I'm calling it bullshit and I'm saying that you're being mean because you know you're being mean. And this is a typical behavior that you do all the time. So yeah, I'm going to call bullshit on it. But how do you respond to people in a healthy way, right? Or in an informative way, or in a way that's going to foster change in that person? Because I think that's the bottom line. The bottom line is that people are just mean. And how do we approach that without being mean in return? That's the question that I think is um, is the big question for me. Because sometimes I just get pissed off and I just want to tell somebody, right? So, but how do I do that in a way that's healthy, in a way that fosters change, in a way that respects people? Um, that's tough. It is. What I do, I try and do, which I did after the call, and I try to do on a regular basis, is when someone is mean, I remember this article. Dr. Heflick really impressed me with the fact that they're the ones with a problem. There's something going on with them that makes them have to be that way. So when you look at someone as the frightened kitty in the corner or the 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 dog that feels threatened, you look at them a little differently. And so you might respond with kindness. Or say, I'm not really sure why you felt compelled, like you said, like say it in a nice way, but right. that's not true or that I that was very harsh and I didn't appreciate it. I don't know where that's coming from. And usually when people are confronted with that response, they they kind of step back and think, wow, that, that was mean. Because I don't think people are always thinking or recognizing how mean they are. So that's one tactic in a one-on-one -on -one situation, right? 
Yeah, and I like that. I mean, I think it's important to I think it's important to call people out in a way that's not going to promote additional confrontation, but you know, if somebody thinks that they have a right to tell you what they think in a way that's going to foster anger or in a way that's going to or in a way that's that's in kindness, right? Because I think it goes back to people believe that they have a right to tell you what they think, whether it's nice or whether it's mean. It's like, you know, I have a right to say whatever I want to say, and you can either accept it or not. I don't care. But so it's really hard to deal with people like that, that feel that they just have a right to say whatever they want. And no matter what you say, it's not going to change who they are. So to those types of people, I say, then, you know, they're not worth your time. Just move exactly. On. Exactly. Disengage. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not worth your time, but it, it is worth your time to call them out on their cruelty. Yeah. I think, yeah. in my, in my humble opinion, although I didn't do it today. I still think it, it is worth your time. <laughs> I was caught off guard by her. I will be honest. Well, yeah, I bet you were. And, you know, we are living in a period of time where words like sheep and, you know, different words are used to describe a wide range of people that are not kind and are just downright mean. It's hard because a lot of people are being hit from a lot of different angles. If you have thin skin, you know, stay off social media because no matter what you say, somebody's going to have a comment that's going to be hurtful. And it's easy on social media because they're behind a keyboard, right? So they, you can't really talk to them. We just live in an environment right now that is just very heightened. You know, I just choose not to engage certain people on certain topics because I know, you know, how that conversation is going to go. So I just don't engage. It's just not worth it. You know, following up on your comment, John, about people, what was it? Fear? What were the three things you mentioned? Fear, hurt, hurt, and weakness. And weakness. Can you think of three better words to describe what people are feeling right now with COVID and the situation, both emotionally, financially, for some people, physically, the all of the turmoil has created a lot of fear, a yep. lot of hurt, and tremendous weakness. Yeah. And you, we're seeing that play out by the divisiveness in groups, right? Right. So we see we're seeing a lot of camps that that appear, but you see it all over the place, right? Because you are attracted to groups that are your in group, and then your in group feels better about themselves by attacking the out group. So what we do individually, we do in groups too. You're totally right about that too, because again, that goes back to lifting ourselves up and you know pushing other people down. But I think what we have a problem with right now is a lack of leadership in a lot of areas of our government. And I'm not just talking about the president, right? I'm not just talking about a lack of leadership from Trump or a lack of leadership from pre president-elect Biden. I'm talking about a lack of leadership from the people that we have voted into the Congress, right? It's this, we have given them a task we have given them a job to do and they have failed us and they have failed us in a lot of ways but whether you're republican or democrat or independent your representatives have failed you and without that lack of leadership there is no cohesiveness in thought there's no cohesiveness in message it's Let's be mean. Let's call everybody that doesn't agree with us sheep. Let's hurt people. Let's not give people the money that they need to survive tomorrow. Let's keep everybody dependent on us and let's not do our job. And 
when you look at it that way, it sucks. And I think that that lack of leadership is really hurting a lot of people right now. And it's causing uncertainty of the future. It's probably has levels of fear, levels of hurt, levels of weakness, but there's a lot of uncertainty out there and uncertainty takes all three of those words and feelings and runs with it because we are uncertain. Uh, agreed. I'm going to kind of disagree with you, John, which normally I don't do. No, they that's are, fine. Go ahead. They, they are leading us in division. They're leading us in a lack of empathy or compassion. They're leading us into a, uh, a a more fractured type of relationship building. Uh, uh, you know, like you, what you see amongst these people is leading in a negative way. So they're Fair leading enough. for sure. Fair but, enough. I agree with you there. But I'm not going to blame them for my meanness. No, this is this is where we have to say this is how an example of how things should not be done, and what are we doing in our lives? Like, how can we recognize our meanness? What can we do to feel better about ourselves? How do we overcome fear? And that's when you stop externalizing all the problems that is someone else is creating and start to internalize it and say, I can change my world. I can change my personal culture. I can change my universe to not accept meanness and to, to create what I can in my life. If I know that fear, hurt and weakness are proponents of being mean, then I can work on that. Right. That's 100% correct. And I agree with you there. The problem with that is this. If I believe a certain thing, whether it's good for the world or not, if I believe a certain thing and I can get one other person to believe that, and then they can get another person to believe that and so on and so on, then they're, then they're strength in numbers, right? So that if, if enough people believe that you're a jerk, then it's okay to say you're a jerk, then that's being mean, but yet you think that that's okay because a lot of people agree with you. So it's like there's strength in numbers. So I guess when I refer to leadership in the sense, you're right, they are leading us down a road that is not what I consider a leader, a qualities in a good leader, right? It's the qualities in a bad leader is is what they're showing now so you know i think we need to take um personal responsibility for it and i agree with you if you feel fear if you feel hurt if you feel weakness then it's good to try to understand the reasons behind those feelings right because in understanding those reasons and then finding solutions to those reasons then you're then you will fear less and you will hurt less and you won't and you'll be stronger for it right exactly but, so i get that on a global level though and on a group level it's a little bit more difficult to do because you have to affect change not only in yourself but you have to affect change you know with a group of people and it takes a different tactic to do well see i i think i'm just a pollyanna optimist ha! and and Pollyanna, she said, everyone. <laughs> probably a lot of people out there who don't know who Pollyanna was. The character. Exactly. exactly. They say you can't boil the ocean. We've talked about this before. But yep. we we can do what we can to be an example. And to be the light, to be the change that we want others to be. The more that we can influence others, which is what we try and do with this podcast. I know that in your coaching, in my program, it's all about empowering you to feel better about yourself or to have the tools that you need to be able to have a point of view that your group has and be a part of that group, but also understand the opposing 
point of view and not hate them for being different. It's one thing to have a friendly game of football or watch a football game and side with your team and jeer yeah, yeah, the yeah. opposing team. But when we go up to the levels where we're actually cruel because someone doesn't believe the way that we do or they don't look the way we want them to look, then that's where we get into trouble. So I and I know what you're saying, John, but I still feel if we can get enough people at an individual level, you know, hopefully it, that'll turn the tide. And yeah, I agree with you. I, I, I think the problem with the way things are right now is that there's so much division and there's so much hate and there's so much rhetoric that is used to hurt people that it's going to take a lot of individuals to overcome those groups because those groups have a platform where people hear what they have to say. And it's going to take a lot of people to to change the tide. And I'm optimistic as well. I think it's going to happen. I think it'll happen slowly, but I think it will happen. Eventually, people are just going to get tired of listening to nonsense and listening to hateful speech. It's beginning to happen now in certain circles. So I think it's going to continue. That article that you um, shared, the um, why are people mean, there was a quote in there that I just find absolutely amazing. And that is when you insult or criticize someone else, it may say more about how you are feeling about yourself than the other person. So, you know, when you, as we always say, when you have time during your day to think about the things that you say, think about that. Have you insulted or criticized anyone today? And if you have, what is it saying about you? And the ne- the very last line is insecurity over ourselves drives much of the cruelty in the world. So if it's driving the cruelty, a part of my larger plan to boil the ocean is just make people feel good about themselves. And how do you do that? When you see someone that looks a little low or might be a awkward, someone who is different from you that you would normally not say a nice thing to. Find something nice about them. Find something that you like about them. And then it helps you to overcome your automatic negative thoughts about people who have whatever. But it also makes them feel good about themselves. And what we really need are for people to feel good about themselves if that's really what's driving the cruelty in the world. So how do we do that? Words, giving compliments that are true and sincere, not not silliness. I do this now all the time. And boy, people's faces light up. Oh, absolutely it does. It, it makes a huge difference in their day and they're going to remember Dude, it. There's always people that are going to rub you the wrong way. That's always going to happen. That's just, it's the nature of life, right? There's people that are going to rub you the wrong way. That's fine. That's going to happen. But there is something in each and every one of us, right? That can be uplifted. And if we concentrate on the things that uplift people, then we do not give strengths to the things that separate us, right? The strength right now is in the separation. What we need to get back to is the things that are, that we share that are common between us. You know, the qualities that, you know, make me feel good, the qualities that make you feel good. And the way of doing that, like you said, is to point out, you know, those things in other people. To get away from the rhetoric that just puts people down. Because it's just not, it's, it's not good. It's, it's not good individually and it's not good for a group of people. Can you imagine a world where people look for the good in others and then compliment that that person for what they see instead of trying to feel better about themselves by belittling them? They can feel better about themselves by lifting another person up. Wow, what a wonderful world 
that would be. Right? Yeah. That'd be pretty that'd be pretty good. Pretty awesome. Yeah. We can do it. Yeah, we can. All right, Kim, let's do it. We're doing let's our do part. It. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We just gotta we just gotta get more people on board. Yeah. No, nah, it's all good. We gotta give the we're giving people that are that have difficulty in expressing themselves a voice right here. So, you know, if you're the type of person who, you know, doesn't like to have the limelight, but you want to be there for other people because you care, then just do that. Be there for other people because you care. That will catch on and you will have made a huge difference in someone else's life. People notice it. Yep. They do. Well, thanks, John. That was a great topic and very apropos. Right. I feel better. I feel much better. Good. All right. Well, listen, thank you listeners for sharing again your day with us or at least an hour or a half hour of it. We appreciate that. We do. Have a great week. You too, John. All right. Bye. Talk to you next time. All right. Bye-bye. shows are available every Saturday right here on heartmindify.podbean.com or wherever you listen. Kim and I would like to thank each and every one of you for allowing us to be a small part of your life. Be kind to yourself and remember, our hearts tell the story, but our mind is the conductor. Conductor.